watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown a lot of new players are struggling right now with paying their premium with in-game money which is totally understandable premium is 16 million silver right now what is this atrocity and how is a new player supposed to achieve this well by putting in one hour of work per day today and for the next couple of days i'm gonna show you money making methods that anybody can use they're gonna be safe money making methods they're gonna be more dangerous money making methods and very dangerous money Money making methods today we're gonna focus on something that i consider safe and that can easily pay your premium and if it's not clear based on the amount i'm running and on the place i'm staying in i'm talking about faction transports to do faction transports first you want to find your faction npc and i'm going to show you each npc's location it's this guy right here in limhurst this guy right here in port sterling right here this guy right here in tedford in Maltrock, it's over here and in Bridgewatch, it's over here now after you get to this npc you want to first make sure you are flagged up if you never flagged up the npc will ask you to flag up it will ask you some questions and stuff like that just press yes everything and flag up after you flagged up a new tab will appear over here you want to click this tab and let me explain what's happening those are the cities with which you can do those trade missions the scallion bridge watch fort sterling Tedford and Matlock. Now, the Kellyan mission appears as the first mission. This is, I think, the most profitable one of the three because it's also one of the shortest trips. But it's the most dangerous one because you're also passing through the red zone. Passing through the red zone means that somebody can gank you and just win everything you have on you. Now, you could get around this by picking the lowest mission because as you can see, this mission comes with one box, two boxes and three boxes. For the one box, you could probably carry it with a horse and uh, yeah, some, good, uh, some good bags. That's it. And maybe some pork pies for the second one i think you already start to need either a better horse or a small ox and for the third one you absolutely need a transport mount maybe you could get around by using a spectral diable but that still makes you a pretty valuable target for gankers if you're just running with a horse like for the first and second mission you should be pretty much safe because gankers don't want to waste their resources ganking you but if you're running with the third one it's already getting too risky so what i suggest you do at least when you're starting out is pick between the second and the third option you never ever want to choose the fourth and the fifth those are way too far away and it's just way too risky for you now besides the fact that there are three levels of missions there's also three different requirements those are three hearts seven hearts on 15 hearts i'm gonna explain how you get those hearts in a second the more you invest into this the more you're gonna get if you just buy the three heart mission then you get four hearts as a return so you made the profit of one heart if you buy the seven heart mission you pay seven hearts but then you get back nine hearts so two hearts in profit and if you do the biggest and most expensive mission for 15 hearts you get in return 18 hearts so that's three hearts same time invested just triple the amount of hearts you get back now how do you get those hearts well there's multiple ways first of all you can buy them with faction points and i'm gonna make different videos showing you how to make faction points but basically just flag up and just do faction related content now if you are like me and you don't feel like doing this type of faction content right now and you just want to jump straight into this and you have some silver to invest into it you could just buy them off of the market those hearts sell for around 50k each let me show you now you might ask yourself why are people buying those hearts like what are they used for maybe you've never seen them maybe you're totally a new player and you have no idea what are you supposed to do with those things well my friends those hearts are used for crafting faction capes the tree heart for example is used for crafting the limhurst cape the heart that you get from fort sterling is used for crafting the fort sterling cape and so on and so forth look at this look at how many people buy them i forgot to show you this so i i return this is per 24 hours all right with that out of the way let me show you the basics of what you want to be doing so you want to go here, you want to click the last tab that appears only if you're flagged up, you want to choose from the second or the third option, or if you feel like risking it, you could choose a trade mission to Kellyan, though again, I suggest if you want to go to Kellyan, just pick the first or maybe the second passage so you can carry them with a horse, but if you're like me and you don't want to risk it, choose the second or the third option. Now, after you choose this, you want to make sure you read this. Those are the tasks, this is what you need to do, you need to deliver the goods to Shady Alder or Shady Edith in Tarkov Fisher or Karin Fidair. Let's see where those maps are. Now, I know already where they are. Tarkov Fisher is right here, and Cain Fidair is right over here. Why would it ask you to deliver to this map? Well, because the text remains the same wherever faction you're from. So this map is basically if you were to deliver from Tedford. This map is if you were to deliver from Limhurst. So because I'm delivering from Limhurst, I wanna choose the second map, which you don't have like to check a box or something, you just go there. Accept the mission, 
and uh, let's roll this is how it goes i'm gonna show you everything there is to it because it's very 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 straightforward the best mounts in my opinion would be the grizzly bear and the spectral diabot those mounts are incredible if you were to pick between the two i would definitely go with the grizzly bear the spectral diabot is, is good because you could escape a potential gang the grizzly bear is amazing because you're basically immortal if people don't organize a gang to kill you you're very hot to die right now oh before i go any further let me explain what i mean by dying are you gonna die if you do this well yes and no no in a way that you don't actually die but yes in a way that you actually lose this and as you've seen it was a pretty big investment it's like 1 million silver or something like that to buy 15 hearts and you definitely don't want to be losing 1 million silver while doing such a run so no you're not dying but at the same time you do have some consequences upon getting knocked down so you don't want that to happen but the grizzly bear is also pretty expensive and i understand that so i need to give you guys some budget options first of all the boar the boar mount would be amazing. Not the dire boar, just a normal boar. It's also very, very good for this. It has a little bit of an advantage because it also moves faster. And it's still quite tanky, but it will be much easier to dismount it. So keep that in mind. The big advantage that you have with the boar is that you can also run barefoot. Because right now, if I were to dismount on this mount and just lose the mount, like just run out of this circle or something like that, uh, I think I would lose the package. And if I don't lose the package, at least I'm going to be so so incredibly slow that i'm just not gonna be able to move anywhere whereas if, if i was on a boar and i get dismounted i can run because that gives you a passive bonus for carry weight this mount carries weight itself the boar enables you to carry weight in a way like that's how we can think about it and because of that you have much more chances at escaping which is great but then again Maybe you just don't want to put up with that. Maybe you just want to do this as a second monitor content. You just want to watch something and make some money in the process. This is the mount you want to be running with. Now, if you're on a small budget and you cannot afford buying either one of those mounts, then a Nox will do just fine. It's still quite hard to dismount while also allowing you to carry pretty substantial amounts of weights. And it's much, much cheaper than any other option. You can absolutely do this with a Nox until you get your budget going and then buy yourself a Grizzly Bear and thank me later. Trust me, this is awesome. Now, some general tips that I have for you because I'm, uh, as you guys can see, I'm almost approaching the map in which I want to be in. Try to always keep an eye on the map and see what happens over there. For example, if I open the map right now and I see Fort Sterling over here, capturing this outpost, almost getting it. Then I know that they're probably going to go for the first outpost. So I might want to go around this way. Uh, maybe I see two factions fighting in the middle of the map. Then I want to avoid the middle of the map. Like right now, what the map tells me is this. Limhurst just captured this area. So probably Limhurst is going to be in this area right here. Probably. They're waiting for this area to be captured so they can also capture that area right there. And as you can see... I'm not wrong about this. Look at the Limhurst faction right here. They're just waiting for this area to be captured. Then they're going to go in the next one. Does it mean that you're safe? Well, for the most part, but not all the way. Because Fort Sterling will respond. So I expect the Fort Sterling Zug to be around those maps in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Because that's how much Limhurst will take to actually get here. So we can expect the Fort Sterling Zug to come here at any moment. Now, some other tips that I have for you. Whenever you see a red name, don't worry too much about it they won't really be able to dismount you. They really won't be able to dismount you. So don't be that scared of them, but be aware. Like if you see a red name, then another red name, then another red name, then five more red names, you might want to change your tracks. Now, the safest way you could go about this is by just hugging the edge of the map. If you are worried about dying, hug the edge of the map. I I'm telling you, there's no reason to be worried. But if you are worried, hug the edge of the map. Alright, once you get into the map in which you have to do the transport, there will be an NPC with a question mark that will also show on the map. Go at this NPC, be aware of something. Whenever you deliver this package, this NPC will make you invisible. So if you've been followed, maybe there's some people after you, maybe there's some people camping to kill you, this is the moment to escape them. So as you can see, you can just stay here and chill all day long. You can just wait for all the harm to pass in this area right here. So check this out. I delivered the packets. I got the second package. Now I'm invisible. Now I'm absolutely invisible. Now this invisibility runs out pretty fast. It's uh, I think shorter than the invisibility that you get from uh, the Black Zone Shrine. But it's still very useful for avoiding some gang situations. Now all you want to be doing is just go back the same way you came from to the same faction NPC that uh, gave you the mission in the first place. And as you saw guys, it took me like 15 minutes to do this. 15 minutes to do this means that you can do it easily 4 times and I 
honestly feel like you could squeeze in a fifth time. But let's say you can only do this four times an hour. Let's see what profit are we talking about. As you saw, nobody cared about me. And there was a faction war going on in the background. Once you got back to the city from which you took this mission, so in my case, Limhurst, you want to go back to the same NPC that gave you this mission in the first place and give him the items. And as you've seen, I've invested 15 tree hearts and I got back 18. That's a profit of 3 tree hearts. Let me see what kind of profit we made right now. Oh, I said profit of 3 hearts. No, they're not 3 hearts. They're raw hearts. Those are used for crafting the faction cape in Fort Sterling. All right, let me put this into perspective. So you made a profit of 3 hearts. Now with this, you could do multiple things. I'm going to show you the first thing that you can do. First thing that you can do straight up is just sell them. Yo, I forgot to say something and it's kind of important. So bear with me. If you want to go with the first option, so selling the hearts, then going to do another transport with Limhurst and keeping your faction rank that way, then you got to sell all of the hearts, not just three of them. All of the hearts, wait for them to sell, then buy 15. Yes, the profit is going to come from those three hearts, but you want to sell all of them so you actually have the money to buy the other 15 three hearts that you need to do the transport. Personally, if you're willing to make an alt, I would suggest the second option. But if you don't want to make an alt, it's going to be a little bit slower, but you could absolutely go with the first option. Now back to the video. Sorry, I forgot to say this in the actual video. My bad. You can sell them for a profit of 132. Let's round it down, yo, to 130. All right, 130k silver. Just round it down times four, because you can do four of those runs per hour. This is what you're looking at. Per hour. Maybe you do this just for one hour. Keep in mind, you can do this all day long. If you do this for six hours, let's say, times six, you made three million silver per day. But maybe you don't want to do this for six hours. Maybe you just want to chill, do this for one hour in the morning and play the game for the rest of the day. If you do this every single day for one hour, you are looking at a profit per month of 15 million silver 600. Which, if you ask me, this is pretty good. If you just put in one more day of work, and you just add one more hour of work, so plus 500k, you made a profit for silver. So you can be doing this for one hour every single day, except one day in which you do it for two hours. And that's how you made the money for premium right here, and you're still left with something. Now, if you're not a lazy person, and maybe you actually want to make more silver, there's nothing stopping you from doing this for two hours a day. You can do this twice per day, every single day. 31 million silver just by doing faction warfare. Maybe you will be like, oh, Mog, but how am I going to sell those hearts? How are you going to be selling those hearts? Very easily. Look at this. Th this is the mountain heart. This sells in Fort Sterling, not in Limhurst. If you were to go with three hearts, check this out. The three heart sells like crazy. Look at how many of them sell per month. This is what you're looking at. So this is your first option, selling. The second option, which is not necessarily something that I recommend, but it's just something to be aware of. If you don't care about your faction rank, you could do right now a run to Fort Sterling. You go to Fort Sterling, you flag up for the Fort Sterling NPC, you lose all of your rank. That's why you don't need to care about your rank if you want to do this. And you just continue trading with the rock hearts from Fort Sterling to Limhurst. You get back three hearts. Then you go with the three hearts to Fort Sterling and so on and so forth. And at the end of the month, you just sell everything. Or maybe once per day, you just sell your hearts in the specific city. So for example, right now, I would be much better off if I'd sell those hearts in Fort Sterling. So I just run in Fort Sterling, flag up for Fort Sterling, accept the mission with this, because I have the 15 hearts that I need to accept the mission, then sell those hearts in the market. I transport to Limhurst. In Limhurst, I will get 18 tree hearts, 15 that I keep to do the mission back to Fort Sterling and three that I sell in Limhurst where they sell the best. This is one of the good ways of making this, though I don't suggest you get rid of, the, of your faction rank. If you don't care about it, maybe you make an alt or something like that, because this doesn't require premium, this doesn't require anything. You just make this profit regardless of your premium. That's what makes it amazing. Now, if you're wondering how you should start getting into this, man, you can just buy the hearts and start. Or you could join one of our streams. We plan on doing those runs quite often with our viewers. So if you want to hang out with us and just have some fun, join us on the stream on twitch.tv slash Mogdan and just make some money with us. I hope this helps and I hope to see you all on the stream. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash Mogdan. This video was made possible by our amazing channel members. If you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself, you are going to get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams, member-only polls, and lots of other awesome perks. Shout out to all of you awesome badasses. Thank you so much for supporting us.